Ever see a minivan with a sequential shifter? Car enthusiasts like you and me hate automatic transmissions, so I figured out how to de-automate the automatic transmission on my Honda Odyssey. Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video, I'm going to take you on the adventure of building this little controller right here, which may or may not grenade my transmission. I'm not just building this controller to manually control the transmission in my van, I'm also doing it because the new ECU I'm getting for it won't control the transmission like the factory computer does. Dropping a fat tune on a car is fun and all, but you gotta put it in gear first. As with any hot rodding project, I started off with a lot of research. Not only did I read Honda's 2500 page service manual for the second gen Odyssey, Okay, I didn't read all of it, but I, I looked at the part that covers the transmission and some fragments of PDFs I found around the internet. Luckily, the BYBA 5-speed automatic that's found in my Honda Odyssey can be controlled completely externally. There's a total of 7 solenoids on the transmission, along with what Honda calls the manual valve, which is just a valve at the end of the shifter cable and that kind of dictates just what gear you're trying to get into. Combined, these all control all the other valves inside the transmission, and they control how much pressure goes to each clutch, when, and all that good stuff. There's actually a huge spaghetti mess of other things inside the transmission, valves, passages, check valves, all that stuff. However, just knowing what the solenoids should be doing will hopefully get us into the right gear at the right time, and hopefully nothing will go wrong. That said, I took a look at what everything said and I wrote down a little logic table that shows me what each solenoid should be doing in each state, so each gear and each in-between gear, and that way I can reference it really quickly later on. Amazingly, all the solenoids just use regular 12 volt power, aside from two of them which are also using 12 volts, however there's an in-between state where they're using some PWM, so they're pulsing on and off very quickly. These two solenoids are CPC-A and CPC-B. They're the clutch pressure control solenoids. What these two solenoids do is they vary how much pressure goes to each selected clutch. These two solenoids will pulse at 240 hertz, so 240 times per second, with a duty cycle of 40 to 50 percent. Now what this accomplishes is it will allow for a smooth transition between gears so you don't get any sudden jarring between shifts. That knowledge was enough for me to write some basic code about the transmission. The only two solenoids I didn't know enough about were CPC-C and TCC, which I found out related to the torque converter lockup function. I was unable to find clear information about how these solenoids operate, so I went out on a limb hoping that if I turn both of them on, it'll lock up the torque converter. What's the worst that could happen? With that all figured out, it was time to start creating this controller. For this project, I decided to go with an Arduino Uno, or at least to get started with testing and all that kind of stuff. If you're familiar with these, you'll know that they only output 5 volts, and a little bit later, I'll tell you how I'm working around that. Arduino in hand, I went ahead and got started building and programming the controller. I went ahead and hooked up 7 LEDs to the controller, so that there was one for each solenoid. This would give me a nice visual representation to cross-check with my logic table. After hypnotizing myself making sure the LEDs were working with some warm-up code, I went ahead and added a pair of buttons to the controller. One button would tell the controller to upshift, the other would tell it to downshift. This is where I started to hit a roadblock because one of my digital write commands wasn't working as expected. Long story short, I had to learn what multi-dimensional arrays were. They sound cool as hell, but they're really just a fancy name for tables. This fixed everything. I was able to change between gears and everything looked exactly how it should according to the logic table. Initially, I didn't have the CPC-A and CPC-B PWM functioning, but I quickly added that in afterwards. It took a little bit of extra work, but nothing major. The only thing left was the torque converter. I considered ignoring it entirely and just letting it stay unlocked. Then I realized that Cruising at 65 miles per hour on the highway is not any fun with an unlocked torque converter, and it's probably a good way to melt the transmission. So I added one more button, which would allow you to request to lock or unlock the torque converter to the controller. Essentially, you press it once, it'll lock, you press it again, it'll unlock. If you change gears with it locked, it'll momentarily unlock, so you can change gears and then lock once it's finished with the gear change. In order to prevent stalling, it is programmed to never lock in first gear. If you downshift into first gear with it locked, it'll wind up automatically unlocking for you. You don't have to worry about it. Code-wise, the controller was completely functional at that point. The only stuff remaining at that point was to add some idiot proofing and make sure it could actually control 12 volts with some additional circuitry. If you're interested in a controller like this, let me know because I'd like to make several more to sell and help fund other projects on this channel. I can't guarantee anything because I haven't done much research on other transmissions, 
But if you have another five-speed automatic Honda transmission with seven solenoids on it, let me know. We might be able to make something work. Oh, and uh, along the way, I reorganized my office. So in case you're wondering why things look different, that's why. I mentioned earlier how the Arduino can only provide five volts and the solenoids require 12. In order to get around this, I'm gonna need a little extra circuitry. I considered using relays. However, as you could imagine, mechanical relays do not do too well at 240 Hertz and solid state relays can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. After some research and math, I figured out a little circuit using MOSFETs and transistors and a couple resistors that will allow me to control 12 volts on the positive side with the Arduino. It's important that I got high side control instead of low side control because all the solenoids ground out through the transmission. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss when the ECU gets here and I install this controller, it's gonna be totally awesome to see it actually work. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any of my larger breadboards. However, in the meantime, you can go ahead and check out one of my aesthetic edits that's up there and that should keep you entertained in the meantime. And I think next week I'm gonna be uploading a old school style edit. So that should be really cool. Keep your eye out for that. Once the larger breadboards arrive, I'm gonna go ahead and enter phase two, which is gonna include adding 12 volt control, some idiot proofing measures, and some quality of life things. Let me know down in the comments what cool features you'd like to see on this controller. I think a shift indicator would be pretty awesome, along with a gear indicator. There's so many cool things we could figure out. Let me know what you can come up with. Thank you.